In April of 1864, Union Major Lionel F. Booth commanded the Union garrison at Fort Pillow in Tennessee with an estimated 600 troops from the 6th U.S. Regiment Colored Heavy Artillery, the 2nd U.S. Colored Light Artillery, and the 13th Tennessee Cavalry. On April 12th that same year, Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest ordered Brigadier General James R. Chalmers to invade Fort Pillow with 1,500 Confederate soldiers. At around 8 a.m., the Confederate troops bombarded the fort with gunfire, quickly killing Union Major Booth and leaving Major William F. Bradford to assume command of the Union troops. At around 3.30 p.m., General Forrest announced the terms of his truce, stating, The conduct of the officers and men garrisoning Fort Pillow has been such as to entitle them to being treated as prisoners of war. I demand the unconditional surrender of the garrison, promising you that you shall be treated as prisoners of war. My men have received a fresh supply of ammunition, and from their present position can easily assault and capture the fort. Should my demand be refused, I cannot be responsible for the fate of your command. Bradford asked for a one-hour delay to respond to this request. In response, Forrest extended Bradford 20 minutes to accept the terms, of which Bradford ultimately declined. As a result, under General Forrest's orders, 1,500 Confederate soldiers charged the fort. Of the estimated 600 Union soldiers, 231 died, 100 were wounded, and 226 were captured. Of the 1,500 Confederate soldiers, an estimated 14 died and 86 were wounded. The Battle of Fort Pillow is often referred to as the Fort Pillow Massacre due to the overwhelming Union casualties. An estimated 138 African-American Union soldiers were killed and 58 were taken captive as prisoners of war. In a report penned by Lt. Gen. Ulysses S. Grant, he writes, The garrison fought bravely until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the enemy carried the works by assault and after our men threw down their arms, proceeded to an inhuman and merciless massacre of the garrison. On April 21, 1864, the Joint Committee on the Conduct and Expenditures of the War inquired into the Battle of Fort Pillow and issued a report to Congress outlining the events of the rumored slaughter. The report estimated that the garrison housed 19 officers and 538 enlisted men, of which 262 were black soldiers, but all three regiments were actively recruiting. The final numbers were unknown. According to the Joint Committee report, our troops, black and white, threw down their arms and sought to escape by running down the steep bluff near the fort and secreting themselves behind trees and logs in the bushes and under the brush, some even jumping into the river, leaving only their heads above the water as they crouched down under the bank. Then followed a scene of cruelty and murder without a parallel in civilized warfare, which needed but the tomahawk and scalping knife to exceed the worst atrocities ever committed by savages. Both white and black soldiers testified regarding the events that occurred on April 12, 1864. According to the testimony of Elias Falls, an African-American private in the 6th U.S. Heavy Artillery, the Confederate Army, quote, killed all the men after they surrendered, until orders were given to stop. They killed all they came to, white and black, after they had surrendered. Contrary to this testimony, African-American Lieutenant Daniel Van Horn stated the following, the order was then given to retire inside the fort, and General Forrest sent in a flag of truce demanding an unconditional surrender of the fort, which was returned with a decided refusal. There never was a surrender of the fort, both officers and men declaring they never would surrender or ask for quarter. The Joint Committee concluded that, quote, the atrocities committed at Fort Pillow were not the result of passions excited by the heat of conflict, but were the result of a policy deliberately decided upon and unhesitantly announced. Currently, historians debate the facts of the Battle of Fort Pillow, specifically regarding the Union Army's surrender and the Confederate Army's alleged misconduct. Nevertheless, based on the estimated Union casualties, Confederate soldiers targeted African-American soldiers, of which only 58 were taken as prisoners of war. According to historian Albert Castell, 
Half of the force holding Fort Pillow were blacks, former slaves now enrolled in the Union Army. Toward them, forest troops had the fierce, bitter animosity of men who had been educated to regard blacks as inferior. In regards to the treatment of black soldiers, one African-American soldier later stated, I do not wonder at the conduct and disaster that transpires at Fort Pillow. I wonder that we have not had more New York riots and Fort Pillow massacres. <laughs>